Hello, this is uh, LCE Graphics. This is training video number 47 in reference to the Duplo DC-10,000S and 8,000S collating towers. Now what we're doing today is we're going to call, focus in on the um, feeding system of the collator. The air, vacuum, suction, and so forth. And the aim is to uh, to help uh, our customers understand a little bit better what Duplo did to help uh, set up these machines so that you could reduce, if not eliminate, feeding doubles and uh, misfeeds. Uh, these machines are very reliable. When we set them up here, we run thousands of sheets through them. In fact, our, our preliminary collator test run, we fill all the bins with paper. We put a stacker on the end of it and we run, the, we run anywhere from five to 10,000 cycles. And in those five or 10,000 cycles, we might get a couple of misses and maybe a double. But predominantly, we're, many times we run the bins all the way down from the top to bottom without having any issues with doubles or misfeeds. Now, one of the things about collators is that you're putting paper in here that's already been printed. It's either been printed on some sort of offset printing press, which, which means that moisture, water, chemicals, ink, spray powder, and all sorts of chemicals and, and things have been impregnated into this paper as, as a part of the process of printing it, sometimes on both sides of the sheet. Also, there may be things like coatings, UV coatings, aqueous coatings, uh, varnish, uh, and any number of, of things that are done to a sheet of paper that later needs to be run through a collator. So it, it requires some thought on the part of the operator when you're setting up a job to consider where the paper came from. Another thing that we want to keep in mind is there's printing being done all sorts of ways. We have the, uh, you know, the classic offset press that prints with you know, either oil-based or rubber-based ink, uh, impresses ink onto the paper. Then we have other types of ink-type machines, like the Indigos and things like that, that, machines like that, that print with ink, but they're not impressed onto the paper the same way as a printing press. Similarly, but not the same. The inks are different. They behave differently. Uh, so these are all things that need to be taken into consideration. And, and thirdly, we have the uh, printing by electrostatic uh, processes and we're talking about mainly copiers, uh, high-speed printers. All these machines actually charge the paper with electricity via their printing process. The way that it works is you have drums. If you have a four-color unit then you have four drums, each one with a different color. The ch drums are statically charged with high voltage static electricity and then uh, <clears throat> the image is uh, put on the drum It'd be a light, a light source that dissipates the static, and so then that static holds the ink, and then that's placed onto the paper directly, and then it goes through some sort of fuser or heat pressure roller or whatever to fuse the toner into the paper onto the paper. The difference is now when you're printing with a copier, whatever you put on the paper is on top of the paper. It actually doesn't have the penetrating capability of ink. So it's going to behave a little differently as you're running it through your processes. You know, uh, rubber rollers that contact the paper that before were not a problem could become a problem um, with toner printed coated paper or uncoated. So you have to keep all these things in mind. One of the issues we're going to talk about right now is static electricity. It seems to be more prevalent with paper printed on copiers or and or static type printing processes. Okay, so we're going to discuss that. Now, what has Duplo done about that? Of course, they were using copiers to print when these machines were designed and, and uh, originally. And uh, feeding double static electricity and paper is nothing new. It, it, it was, uh, you know, it's been around since the Stone Age or whenever it was that paper started being used. I'm not going into history right now. <laughs> anyway, so let's talk about these little rascals right here. All they are is spring tension adjusters. Now, what they do is they adjust the tension on the bins themselves. Right now it's in the middle, which is medium tension, and if you can see the spring moving in and out, I'm going to have to put some light on these because there we go. You see how the spring moves in and out.
Now what that does, the way that's designed is sort of like a bail bar. It has a rubber roller in here that does not rotate. It's just a bar that's ro uh, covered in rubber. You'll see it going all the way across. We're going to call that a bail bar for those of us who've ever run printing presses that understand what a bail bar does. All a bail bar does is set the height of your paper in a printing press on cheap fed presses. So this spring tension provides more tension. Now what the way that works is when this bin goes up, that bar goes down, and then there's a blast of air that's shot into the paper. That's called a separator blast. Now what that does is it opens the sheets up, sort of like a fan, and uh, allows your sucker foot to pick the sheet up and reduces the uh, possibility of picking up the second sheet. Okay? So then, but sometimes when you're running, uh, but then sometimes when you're running paper that has static, regardless of that first separation, the sheets want to stick together. And that where, that's where a lot of our problems come in. So one thing you can do is you can reach over here and lower that to three, which is no additional spring tension. Now you have just the spring tension that's built into the mechanism on the other side. This actually has two sets of springs. One we just released the tension on, which we might call an auxiliary spring. And then it has a, a spring built into the mechanism inside. So now you have less spring tension. Now what does that do for you? Well, it allows more air to penetrate the sheets and it allows the air blast to separate the sheets better. So just by lowering it to position three, you can find an, imp an improved um, separator position. Also, on the sucker feet themselves, and of course we're going to have to get into that in a minute, uh, we'll have to take the camera off the stand because it's impossible to do otherwise. But, um, but anyway, that's one of the ways that you can increase or decrease the separation. Another way that this helps you is when the sheet is picked up by the sucker feet, you have a second blast, which actually lifts the sheet away from the stack. And that's what really helps separate the two sheets. Well, if you have this with less spring tension, you'll get more of that air blast. will come all the way to the back of the sheet a lot better. The bin is designed to go up and then pick up the sheet. And then when the sheet's picked up, the bin will drop down about a quarter of an inch to allow that air blast to go through. But by lowering your spring tension, you actually allow more of that to happen, get better separation on your sheets. In fact, uh, for uh, papers like 80 pound coated and, and, and uh, above, uh, it's recommended that you release the spring tension on these machines uh, to help, uh, help improve that situation with the feeding. Sometimes it depends on the paper that you're running. You know, sometimes if you load this machine with like 12 by 18 or 13 by 18 with, and you load coated paper in the bin, well, that's a very heavy lift of paper. And it may require that auxiliary spring tension on at least position two to uh, be able to lift the bin up so that the sucker feet can pick it up. And that's something you'll have to, you know, you'll have to experiment with as you do that. Now, the other thing that's really important is when you're loading the paper. I mean, um, in a perfect world, we could grab the paper, however it came off the press or the copy, and just slap it in there, you know, boom, bam, boom. And I mean, maybe that's how some people do it. But... The way it works best is to fan the paper. If you don't know what fanning is, it's basically taking a, a lift of paper and you bend it like a U, like that, and then you grab it and then you open it. And you see there how you're getting air in the paper. That's fanning. And why is that important? Well, it's important because um, you have to separate the sheets. What that, what that separation does, it actually um, uh, reduces the static, if not dissipates the static. There is another uh, more contemporary way of doing it. Hold one minute. Another way that we do it here, we have this really nifty vacuum cleaner with like a 30-foot uh, hose, as you see I'm holding in my hand here. And what we do is we turn that on because sometimes, you know, we'll have all 10 bins loaded 
uh, with paper and we're doing a test run on a, a demo for a customer or we're doing a test run and this is with any collator this doesn't matter if it's a brand new 5000 or Borg or Horizon no matter whose collator is static electricity does not you know play favorites so that being said anytime we have a static issue first thing we do we get our trusty vacuum cleaner out put the hose on the blow side and whoosh and all you have to do is get that vacuum cleaner and blow into that paper really really good after you have it loaded now, if it's really light stock, you may want to put your fingers on the stack as you're blowing so it doesn't blow your sheets all over. But anyway, you just go from bin to bin, and you blow that paper really, really well, and it makes an awesome amount of difference, okay? It makes a difference between fighting the collator all day long and getting your job done. So these are just little modern techniques that we've picked up here, um, you know, to help us get our job done, and we transfer that to our customers to help them get their job done. Now there's some other things that Duplo has done to um, to improve this thing, the situation with uh, all right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our camera off the podium here, and the, the difficulty is going to be with these machines is it's kind of dark in there, so we're going to try to shine a light so you can see a little bit better. Now I'm going to raise the bins. Now, if you look closely at the sucker feet, each one of the sucker feet, there's five of them on each bar, there's a little white plunger on there. If you'll notice that. And how's that white plunger adjusted? As you can see right here, they've got these little white plungers. Now what you can do is you can push those plungers in and turn them and then what happens as you turn them the plunger pushes out further. Now what that plunger, uh, some people call it a, a, a sucker foot rest, uh, Duplo calls it a double sheet eliminator. What that does is when you, as you push it down it, it raises the sucker foot up. Now where that's an advantage is when you're blowing air into the paper if the sucker foot is down on the paper, it'll actually push the air out, so you lose the benefit of that initial air blast. So by by lowering those, uh, we usually run them on position two or three, and that's from zero with with nothing protruding to you know one. That's one, two, and three. So that's you know that's where we normally run it, two and three on uncoated papers and thin stocks. Now when you get into cover stocks, you need to raise those up all the way to zero, so you're not using them. Now the other thing you want to concern yourself is with this little adjustment right here. Now we're going to show you how how that can help you eliminate problems. That little adjustment, what that does is adjust the position at the bottom. And as you can see up underneath there, you see how that sucker foot goes up and down as I, as I adjust that knob? Well, that's just the opposite. Again, I'm, I'm relating to you folks. Uh, who have run sheet fed presses, either Ryobi's, Hamada's, uh, AB Dix, or any kind of press like that, or even the Indigos have these types of feeders, but they, uh, they basically have a bail bar, and, and they have a, a, a pile height. Well, you can't really adjust the pile height on these Duplos, but you can adjust the height of the sucker, which is the same thing. So the idea is that when you're running light stock, like Bonds and so forth, you want to the sucker foot to just barely touch the top of the stack of paper with the bins all the way up and you can adjust that right here and that's a really huge double sheet eliminator situation now um, there's several reasons why you pick up doubles static electricity is one and we've shown you know you get your vacuum trust your vacuum cleaner out in fact if you have a uh, we have an auxiliary blower unit that we sell that we can that, that mount on these collator towers that actually blows air into the bins it really helps with that but, you know, if you don't want to do that, you can use a vacuum cleaner. You can use um, uh, an air pump that's hanging around with a hose on it. Just anything that will blow a good volume of air into the paper, okay? So, um, anyway, getting back to what we were talking about, this adjusts the position of the sucker foot. And that's real important because, uh, you know, one of the things about these collators is, you know, everybody back in the, you know, in the 80s were like, oh, we need a collator that will feed coated paper. And, you know, everybody was crying and moaning and, oh, these friction feed collators are horrible. They won't feed coated paper. 
So, you know, Duplo, Horizon, and Borg say, you know what, we need to invent a collator that will feed coated paper. And they did. Guess what? Now everybody wants to run uncoated paper on the collator. It's like, duh. It wasn't designed for that, everybody. But anyway, so we got to deal with that situation, but it's no big deal. You know, you've got tools that they implemented here in the uh, outside chance that someone would want to run uncoated paper on any of these collators, you do have to change things. Even the new 1060s, you can't run the same amount of vacuum on a 20-pound bond sheet that you run on a 100-pound coated paper. There's just no way because, you know, it's just going to suck right through and pull five or six sheets into the, into the feeder, so there's no way to stop that. In fact, if all the new collators didn't feed doubles, then why would they have double detectors in the first place? So, you know, bottom line is every, are they all feed doubles. Anyway, the, the, the other thing you can do is you can reduce the amount of vacuum to those bins. For example, right here you have a little uh, guide that pulls over. I hope you can see that. It's got three holes in that unit right there. And what those are is those are bleed off holes on the tube itself. When you slide that little piece over, what that does is it exposes one, two, or three bleed off holes. Now that's that's there for one reason. Let's say you're running a job and it's eight sheets of, you know, 60-pound offset and a 10-point chrome coat cover. Well, we know that we're going to need more vacuum to pick up that 10-point cover than we're going to need to pick up the 20-pound or 60-pound offset, right? Okay, so you crank the vacuum up on the pump enough to pick up your big heavy sheet up top. Now you've got too much vacuum for the ones beneath. Make sense? Okay, so now all you do is bleed off that vacuum by pulling... The, the collar over. What I would do is if I had a scenario like that, I'd set my collator up and I'd bleed off one hole on every bin just to start with. There's another technique that some operators use is they leave one of the valves of the sucker feet open so that it bleeds air. Especially when you're running eight and a half by eleven, what we're finding is that if you have a you know an eight and a half by eleven job, you got a you know eight or nine, six or seven or eight sheets and, and it's all like you know sixty pound offset you don't even have to turn the valves off on, on, the, on the sucker feet. Just put the paper in there, and it'll still feed it fine because it's picking up such a light, small sheet. Just keep in mind one thing, that when you're picking up a sheet with this collator, the weight, density, and the type of paper has a lot to do with how much vacuum you need. You know, an 8.5 by 11 20-pound bond sheet will weigh less than an 8.5 by 11 offset paper because offset paper has more clay in it therefore it's heavier okay same thing goes for coated if you have a you know 10 point chrome coat eight and a half by eleven it's going to weigh three times as much as a twenty pound bond eight and a half by eleven so keep all those things in mind so you have you have not only do you have the thickness of the paper to consider you have the weight of the paper the actual physical weight of it so when you load thirteen by eighteen paper in here your sucker foot has to pick up and advance a much larger sheet so you, you know, try to keep those things in mind. And once, once you get this technique done, it's really not that big a deal, you know, because, um, you know, uh, we set them up, we run them. You know, we're not geniuses here, but just basically utilizing the tools that the manufacturer and the engineers that built these machines put there for us to use. And you have another, another little gizmo in here we're going to talk about, and that is a separator brush. Now, some of these Duplos like this one have one separator brush. Now, I don't know if you can see that little separator brush, but it's right, right there. I'm pointing at it with my finger. It's right there on the back. Now with that separator brush, nobody ever looks at it. But the separator brush is important because that's what knocks that second sheet back. And that's what also separates the sheets and allows that second air blast to really separate the top sheet. So take a look at those brushes. Make sure they're not worn out, you know. Make sure that uh, you know. Make sure that you're you're not dealing with that kind of situation. All right. So we've talked about the sucker feet. Uh, we've talked about the the uh, double sheet eliminators, the little pistons that stick out underneath the suckers you see there in the center of your screen. Those little white pistons right there. Okay. And we've talked about the position of the sucker at the bottom. We've talked about bleeding off the vacuum. And also increasing the air pressure is the next thing we're going to talk about. You can adjust the air pressure on the pump, increase it, get enough air blast in there to where you're really doing some damage when that air blast com comes on. And you should be able to see the sheet flutter. Uh, you, you should be able to see, look in there with a flashlight, and then the initial blast, the first blast, you should be able to see the, the sheet just open up like a fan. And then the second blast, you should see that whole sheet all the way back dancing above the stack, like... Like as if there was a, a